have this clip. It's like four in the morning. I'm at work right now on my break, but I just finished editing the video and realized I didn't film an intro for it. So I wanted to pop in and say hello and welcome. I hope you enjoy it. A little bit of spring motivation and enjoyment for you. I'm making my gluten-free, grain-free um, coconut shrimp tacos with mango salsa. Turned out so good. I'm definitely gonna make it like all summer long. Then also um, a fridge clean out because we all need a little motivation sometimes to do some spring cleaning. And I don't know about you, but a clean fridge, it makes me so happy. <laughs> and then lastly, I'm sharing um, starting my garden this year. I'm fairly new at gardening. I officially started as a beginner last year, but I did learn a ton. So I want to share some of the tips and things that I learned with you. So that's also in this video. I hope you enjoy it. Please give it a thumbs up if you do. And yeah, let's get into it. First step is the mango salsa. I'm using one lime, one mango, too many cucumbers or half of a regular cucumber, half of a red onion, and about a cup of cilantro. I'm giving just kind of approximate measurements for this recipe because I think it's really to taste. Um, I felt like too many cucumbers was good, one mango was good. The juice of one lime, just you know, half of a, maybe not even half, like a third of a red onion, and then I'm a cilantro freak, so I added a lot of it, but if you just wanna add a little bit, feel free to do that too. And even just salt and pepper was like eyeballed, I didn't measure that at all. Um, and I think actually red pepper would be really good in this as well, or if you wanted to substitute the cucumber for red pepper, or like orange pepper. Um, I'm a little bit sensitive to peppers. My stomach doesn't really love them, so that's why I chose cucumber instead for that fresh crunch that pairs really nicely in it. And I did leave this salsa in the fridge overnight to kind of marinate and let those mango juices release, but you don't have to do that. You could totally eat it right away as well. I just think that everything tastes better when you let it sit for a little bit. Actually, the first mango I've ever bought and cut up um, when I've bought mango in the past it's usually just like the frozen chunks for smoothies but if anyone has some good tips on how to properly cut a mango I was laughing so hard at myself watching this back because I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm cutting it in such a weird way <laughs>
coconut shrimp and I just wanted to remind you that this whole recipe is gluten and grain free. It's also dairy free as well. So I'm using just some raw white prawns. You can use shrimp, I'm pretty sure they're the same thing. <laughs> um, some coconut flour, some coconut milk. And then I didn't have any shredded coconut. I think usually you would use like a sweetened shredded coconut in this recipe, but I just had the flakes. So I'm putting them in the food processor with a little bit of monk fruit sweetener to make my own sweetened shredded coconut. Um, but I think, yeah, it would be a lot easier if you just bought the regular stuff from the store. And I'm not gonna lie, this was the second time I had to make this. Make sure your shrimps are peeled before you start the whole process of dipping them in the flour, the coconut milk, because the first time I made this, I didn't do that. I forgot that there was still the peel on them and I felt so silly, but anyways, not a big deal. I did it again and um, for the coconut milk, mine was in the fridge so it did separate. So as you can see, I'm using just like the clear part of it, but um, if you don't put your coconut milk in the fridge and just leave it out in the pantry, it should all be kind of mixed together and then it's more creamy, but this worked really well too. So anyways, starting out by putting the shrimp straight into the coconut flour and you really want just a thin coating on there. So as you can see, I'm tapping off any excess, putting it into the coconut milk next and <laughs> I was laughing at myself here too because I am really bad at the whole like keeping one hand wet one hand dry process you could see me there kind of like wait which fingers are wet which ones are dry and I ended up just using both for everything and it was fine it was a little messy but it worked um, so after the coconut milk I'm putting it into the shredded coconut and then into the air fryer cooking my shrimp in the air fryer um, but if you don't have one you could just do it in your oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes and you want to make sure that you flip the shrimp halfway through. from the xanthan gum and you want it to be the same consistency as a crepe batter. I found this recipe on Pinterest and absolutely loved it. It's like four ingredients, really easy. Next time I'd probably use um, a smaller pan and probably have two pans going at a time because it's three minutes on each side. It was a little bit time consuming so just something to make note of um, but they're really good. I'll definitely be making them again.
second taco that I made because I added avocado and it is absolutely a must. If you make these, you need to add avocado as well. Let me know in the comments if you make them, if you like them. I highly recommend. They turned out amazing.
having a vegetable garden and I absolutely loved it. It is definitely my new favorite hobby. I did my seeds outside last year about end of May, just directly in the garden and everything did quite well. Um, minus my cucumbers, those did not sprout last year and my spinach kind of struggled a little bit. So I'll share what I learned last year with you shortly. Um, but this year I decided to start my seeds inside earlier about beginning of April, middle of April. Um, I talk a little bit more about it and show me planting the seeds in my last video. So have you, if you haven't seen it yet, make sure you go and check it out. Um, here I'm just trimming off any extra sprouts. You don't want to have a whole bunch of sprouts clustered together. You just want like one. Um, and I didn't realize you're not supposed to pull them out. You are supposed to cut them so that you don't damage the roots. So if you didn't know that, then make sure you're cutting your sprouts next time. And I just wanted to show, this was a journal that I kept last year, just making notes of some of the things that worked, that didn't work, so that this year when I went to do my gardening again, I could look back on my notes and be reminded of kind of what goes good together, what likes shade, what likes more sun, things like that. And like I said, I will share with you some of the tips and things that I learned here shortly. Right now, I am just laying out the sprouts, kind of planning out an outline of how I want them to go in my garden box. And Walter, my cat, was a little stinker this year and he did get into one of the trays and dug them all out and mixed it all up. So I have a few miscellaneous sprouts that I wasn't 100% sure what they are. And it turns out things that I thought were carrots were dill and I have a random spinach that I thought was a beet and so it's kind of funny my garden's not um, perfectly organized this year there are a few random things but it's funny I enjoy it and it makes me smile every time I go look at my garden let me know in the comments if you use gardening gloves and shovel I am definitely not that person I love the feeling of just getting my hands dirty digging in the dirt I feel like a little kid again and it's really fun. I just feel like I'm playing. I wanted to share some of the things that I learned as a new gardener last year. So firstly is to start your seeds early inside, like beginning, middle of April. Last year I started mine outside, middle of May, and although everything grew really well throughout the summer, I was harvesting things quite late. I think I was picking tomatoes in like October, so it is really helpful to start your seeds inside earlier. Um, you also want to gradually bring the sprouts outside for short periods of time for a few days before you actually plant the sprouts outside and you want to make sure to wait until after the last frost to plant them. Um, also you want to make sure you look on your seed packet to see if what you are planting likes full or partial sun or shade things that are sun lovers such as like lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, those you want to plant where your garden gets more sun or like mine is a garden box so the front of the garden box gets more sun. Things such as like spinach that like shade I did in pots so that I can move the pots around into the shade if needed. If you are planting in pots you want to make sure that they have drainage holes at the bottom and moisture control soil is also really good to get. I got that last year and I found it really helpful. Um, you want to make sure there's drainage holes so that your plants don't get root rot and a good rule of thumb for watering and making sure you don't overwater your stuff is to just stick your finger in the soil a little bit and if it's still damp then you're probably good to wait a day but if it's feeling dry then yeah you definitely want to water it. I try to water my stuff pretty much every day unless it rains but yeah just stick your finger in and see how the soil feels. When you're planting your sprouts, you want to, I think I mentioned this earlier, but you want to pick the strongest looking sprout and then trim the other ones around it with scissors to avoid damaging the roots of the sprout that you want to keep. Um, you also want to look on your seed packages to see how far things like to be spaced apart when you're planting them. So like things such as tomatoes, those are gonna get really big. So you wanna space those quite far apart. Even here, they're a little bit too close together. In my next video, you'll see that I did have to um, thin them out a little bit more. So you definitely wanna look on your packet, things that are gonna get big, you wanna give a lot of space. Things such as like chives that don't get very big, you can put a little bit close together. 
Another general rule of thumb is that if it tastes good together, it usually is going to grow good together. I looked on Pinterest, they have a lot of really good charts that show things that grow good together and things that don't, so make sure you look it up, but yeah, I always try to remind myself, okay, if this goes good together, like in a recipe or food, like, you know, basil and tomatoes or carrots and dill, things like that, they're probably going to grow, grow good together. Also, the best time to pick your vegetables is first thing in the morning. That's when they're going to be the most crisp, so especially like lettuce and things like that, you want to pick it first thing in the morning. Plants such as your greens, those are good to harvest throughout the season, so lettuce, spinach, chives, your beet greens, and yeah, that's what's so great about them is they're going to keep growing even if you are harvesting them, and you do want to make sure that you are harvesting your greens and your herbs before they bulb or flower to avoid bitterness especially things like spinach leaves once they get full size you don't want to leave them too long you want to harvest them right away otherwise they will start to taste better so those are kind of the main tips that I thought of I will put them in the description box I hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching I'm sending you lots of love and we'll see you in the next one